Okay, I'm gonna go over some very interesting facts about comets that I would wager 99.9% .9 of you don't know about. Uh, NASA has been very good at uh, keeping this under wraps and keeping it quiet. Uh, they, they have published the information and made it available to the public, but uh, the mainstream press has basically completely ignored uh, all of this. Uh, and the, these, these findings from these comets uh, call into question uh, long-standing theories about the, the history of the universe, the history of Earth, uh, and uh, even all of cosmology in general. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, everything that I'm going to report to you uh, today on facts uh, pertaining to comets is taken taken from NASA's own websites and uh, published peer-reviewed papers uh, on the subject. Uh, most of this is going to come from something called the Deep Impact Mission. Uh, what the Deep Impact Mission was was uh, NASA sent out a, a satellite space probe out to a comet called Temple One, and uh, that satellite got to the comet and it released a little copper impactor and then they put the satellite out a little ways from the comet and they let the impactor slam into the comet as it was traveling uh, across and uh, the satellite took pictures of the impact and and the spectrum of the comet and the, the heat of the comet and all of the the pictures and details of everything that a scientist would want to know about the comet uh, that they could get from from that impact uh, so here, here are some uh, interesting facts about comets. Let's go over number one. Uh, so going over the deep impact mission. Uh, the copper impactor generated such an energetic explosion that the primary mission sensors on the satellite were swamped and the primary mission of photographing the crater was unable to be carried out. Uh, quoting a NASA scientist, we didn't expect the success of one part of the mission, the bright dust cloud, to affect the second part, seeing the resultant crater, but that is uh, part of the fun of science to meet with the unexpected, end quote. So what does that tell you? Uh, if, if comets are made out of uh, ice and water, and supposedly this is what uh, gave the Earth its oceans, then how, why would a copper impactor striking uh, ice create such an energetic flash, I mean, we're talking huge, that it uh, uh, would blind out the sensors and, and the, the impact uh, can't, couldn't even be seen. Uh, scientists were speculating uh, in the room uh, prior to the impact that the impact would be so small that they wouldn't even be able to see it take place, that it would be such a tiny puff of, uh, you know, uh, ice that would shoot out that uh, they, they wouldn't even be able to register it on their sensors, and they were very concerned about that. Instead, it was a flash that uh, was so energetic it took up the size of uh, several city blocks. I mean, it was uh, like a, a mini nuke going off. It was gigantic. Uh, the second part here, and, and I'll go over some pictures of that impact and, uh, and detail this uh, in more detail uh, in a minute. Um, the second, second fact, uh, the impact generated finely divided dust, something that should be impossible due to sublimation. Uh, so when the impact took place, they, uh, the impactor slammed in, and, and they're looking at the dust, the resultant dust cloud that was generated in this huge explosion uh, from the impactor hitting the comet. And uh, they realized that the dust was extremely fine, like powder almost like a talcum powder, and it was spread out over a huge area, uh, and it was ionized. And uh, they couldn't figure out why this was the case. Uh, the, the standing theory of comets is you have this big ball of dirty ice, and uh, the sun heats it up, and uh, these dust particles uh, just blow off from the melting of the comet, and uh, they, should be in, they should be thick chunks of rock, not... Uh, not finely divided talcum powder dust blowing off. <clears throat> uh, the third fact. Photographs of the surface showed a sharp rocky relief, a rocky appearance. Uh, it showed impact craters, and there was no clearly defined ice. Now, think about that. There was no clearly defined ice, and uh, the pictures looked exactly, exactly like asteroids that have no uh, water, at least scientists speculate, have no water on them at all. Okay, the fourth interesting fact about comets is that no other comet nucleus has ever been observed to have ice on its surface. 
We know this from uh, a couple of different spacecraft that have gone past comets. So one would be Deep Space One that went past uh, Comet Borley in 2001. No water detected on the surface. The other one would be the Stardust spacecraft which went past Comet Vilt 2. No water was detected on that comet's nucleus either. <laughs> That's three comets in a row that we visited with spacecraft. No water. The most water we've seen, the most ice we've seen, was on Temple 1, and that was only 0.5% of the surface, and that's debatable as well. So think real hard about that, folks. Uh, the fifth interesting fact, uh, massive changes in the spectrum of the comet's coma uh, compared to before and after impact. So if comets were a melting snowball, uh, you would not expect any changes in the spectrum compared to a, a before impact and an after impact of the comet's coma. And this was not what they found. They found after the impact, the, the spectrum changed uh, radically. Sixth interesting uh, thing here is uh, dust jets. These are really plasma plumes on the dark side of the comet. So here you have the side of the comet that's facing away from the sun, and this is the part of the comet that's discharging. It, th it doesn't make any sense according to standard theory. How could something that's not being heated by direct sunlight in a vacuum uh, be discharging these jets of uh, supposedly uh, dust? It doesn't make any sense. Um, then here is a, a, a big one. This is, this is the biggest one. Uh, I'm going to quote to you a NASA scientist here. Since the visible images have a higher spatial resolution, we use those images to calculate the extent of ice on Temple 1's surface. That turns out to be a small fraction of the surface, only 0.5%. Uh, let me state that again. The extent of ice on Temple 1's surface is only 0.5%. Doesn't sound like a big ball of ice to me. Uh, continuing on. What is significant is that the extent of this ice on Temple 1's surface is not sufficient to produce the observed abundance of water and its byproducts in the comet's coma. Here you have a NASA scientist directly stating that there is no ice visible on the surface of the comet, basically none, uh, and that uh, there's no way that they could tell from, from the images that the, the that there's this huge amount of water being given off in the comet's coma and they they can't see where it's coming from it's not coming from the comet's uh, surface there's no water ice on the surface of the comet <laughs> what well, let's continue on here a few more quotes uh, theories about the volatile layers that would be the water ice below the surface of short period comets are going to have to be revised. So one of their theories was, well, you know, maybe this is just a dusty coating and there's the whole center of the comets made out of water ice. Uh, but the, as NASA scientists are stating here, no, that, that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, further, all we needed was a factor of three boost from the impact to get a definite detection. We didn't see that. So what they're saying is, uh, once we saw the impact, they were expecting uh, the, the sensors to pick up a, a bloom of water. Uh, but they did not see that in the sensors. All they saw was dust come off. Further, it's pretty clear that this event did not produce a gusher, says SWAS principal investigator Gary Melnick of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The more optimistic predictions for water output from the impact haven't materialized, at least not yet. Well, that's a pretty drastic statement there, too. And a little bit more. There's a lot of structure on the comet, which is a bit surprising, Richardson said. That could mean there's some strength to the comet. So here we have all so just just this alone from the deep impact missions websites is enough to seriously call into question our standing theories of what comets are made out of uh, how can comets be a big ball of melting ice if they're giving off 1400 degree plasma plumes finely divided dust uh, we see no water on the surface uh, they have impact craters they appear to be a one big it appears to be a big gigantic rock uh, we see no water coming off from the impact. We saw no ice from the impact. Uh, what is a comet? 
What is this? 